Today we are going to set up Ubuntu server inside of Oracle VirtualBox. So it's telling me that we need to take this ebook. We don't really need to take the ebook. We're just going to wait for Ubuntu server ISO to get onto our system. So you can see it's down here going into our downloads. Once this is complete, we will be opening up Oracle VirtualBox, which you can download from their website. Here, I'll show you that to you. So if we are over at the virtualbox.org website, you should just be able to click download VirtualBox 5.2. It'll take you over to their downloads. You're on a Windows host, so really, I guess you could just click Windows hosts. From there, it's going to get this EXE, which you would obviously install that, run it, and get all that stuff set up. But I already have it, so instead, I'll just launch my VirtualBox software. Now, when you start your Oracle VirtualBox Manager, it's going to look just like this. You'll obviously want to wait for the ISO to finish downloading, but now you'll just click on New. And we're just going to call this TS3. Type Linux Ubuntu 64-bit. Let's go with... Let's go with... 4 gigs of RAM. There we go. So we created TS3. Now once we click start, it's going to ask us to select an image right here. So we'll click this and then we're going to find our Ubuntu ISO file and we'll click start. So after you start up the Ubuntu server ISO, it's going to ask you to select a language. I'm going to go ahead and just hit enter for English. We're going to click install Ubuntu server. It's going to take a little bit of time to go through this installation process, but the good news is that once you have it installed, you are all set to go. So we'll do yes. It's going to ask us to press these keys. We'll hit the letter Y, W. Is there any key labeled out? No. Uh, for some reason, it's not letting me select no. Based on the keys you pressed, yeah, US, okay, so continue. Anyways, um, looks like for that part, it was asking me if there's any keys with crazy characters, and you hit enter, and then it actually is asking you if there's like 50 other weird characters and you just have to keep smashing enter like a Hulk, like the Hulk. But should um should be over on to the next step real soon here. Essentially what you're just gonna be doing is going through the installation process of Ubuntu server. This is pretty simple and I don't want anybody to get stressed out about this because you are basically becoming a server admin that knows absolutely nothing. We can leave the host name default, just hit enter. Uh, full name for the new user. Uh, I'll just type R4P3, username R4P3, enter password R4P3, R4P3. And it's asking us if we want to use the weak password, hit the left arrow, enter. Encrypt your home directory, left arrow, enter. And based on your present physical location, America, New York. Yes, this is correct. How did it know I live in New York? Wow, that's crazy. Okay, so we're going to use the entire disk and set up LVM. Uh, so hit enter, enter, and then hit left arrow, enter to to say yes, we want to configure that. It's going to say the amount of volume. Uh, just hit continue. Write these changes to the disk. Left arrow, enter. And right now we're just partitioning and formatting the system. So at this point in time, it should just be going straight into the installation of the system. And there should be a point where it's asking us what software we want. All right, here we go. Looks like it's asking us if we want a proxy. We're going to just say continue. So to do continue, I'm pretty sure I hit that right arrow key, then tapped enter. 
from here it's configuring apt that's basically just um on ubuntu that's how you download or install different packages it's your package manager so now uh, we're gonna say we want to install security updates automatically and from here do standard system utilities. We don't need LAMP, DNS. Uh, if you want any of these, by all means, go ahead, but you don't need to. So we'll just do enter for continue. Okay, so basically we're gonna go ahead with installing the, the Grub bootloader. So tap enter. From here, pretty much we're just going through the, the whole Installation. It's, it's a freaking process. I don't like it. It's kind of slow, irritating a little bit. I just wish it was like bang, bang, done. But it it's definitely got some steps to it that are kind of just tedious. But that's okay. So after after it runs DPKG and the, the installation is finished up for you, you're going to have a nice, simple place to log in and you'll be all set with Ubuntu. And then you can install TeamSpeak 3 and get it get it all set running inside there so you're safe. Okay, so you should be much safer now because as soon as you hit continue, finishing that installation, ideally the... the Reboot is going to let you just boot straight up into Ubuntu server installed. And once we boot up, we should be looking at R4P3, R4P3. From here, we're going to uh, switch you to the root user. but I don't know the root user password. So really we're gonna sudo su, and there we go. Now, I think I think we're gonna to want to uh, app install xinit. Yes. So once we get this, we should be able to type start x. There, perfect. The only thing is that we probably need to install like GNOME or something like that. So I'm gonna do that really quick. Hold on, I'm not not really a GNOME pro, so give me a sec. Okay, so I figured it out here. I think we just do an app get update. Once we finish this app get update, we should do app get install. Ubuntu desktop. Yes. Now it's going to install Ubuntu desktop. It may take a little bit of time here for you to get all this set up, but after you give it a, a little bit of time, you go maybe cut down a tree, mine some gold or whatever. I'm just kidding. But, oh shit. Now you know that I'm, uh, I'm in college. So my timer is going off for me to go to my fucking class. I gotta blur that out then, I guess. Okay, so now we're just gonna go ahead and just throw a reboot in here. Should restart the system for us. And since we installed Ubuntu Desktop, when we load up here, we should just be able to log in. And it should show us the Ubuntu Desktop now. There we go, so there's that. I mean, keep in mind, it probably will take a little bit of time just to install like all the Ubuntu desktop stuff, but I assure you once that's installed, you should be ready to go. And from here, we're gonna go over to teamspeak.com slash downloads. And if we scroll down, there is the client 64 bit. Click that, click okay to save the file. We're going to click on show all downloads and right click here, click open containing folder. Should be able to close out of Firefox now that we have this. So we'll move this over to the desktop. 
uh, control alt T is going to open your terminal. You're going to CD desktop, chmod plus X, team speak tab. Um, then we're going to LS, it should be green. There it is. So we're going to say, we're going to call it directly, press enter, hold page down or tap page down, tap Q, hit Y, enter. It's going to extract that. It says your record your encryption passphrase. Encrypt the home directory or private folder. A strong passphrase has been automatically generated. Usually your directory is unlocked with your user password, but if you ever need to manually recover this directory, you will need the passphrase. Okay, run this action now. Passphrase R4P3. Okay, so that's what it is. Well, ideally you would copy this down somewhere and print it if you really want to keep your stuff encrypted well. And I'd also suggest changing your user password, but anyways, whatever. Um, from here, we're going to RM TeamSpeak, do a dash three. It's going to remove the run file. All we really need is this one right here. So with this file here, just op or open this folder. We're going to click Edit, Preferences. You're going to click on Behavior. And here it says Run Executable Text Files when they are opened. So we're going to select this because this is what we're, essentially what we're trying to do here is we want to, um, we're gonna do Vim here, but then there. So that's exactly what we want. And then we're just gonna make a link here. And this link we can easily drag over here, right click, rename it, start TS3, close that. And now anytime you wanna start your TS3, Double click here. One more thing, I went into audio. I, uh, I checked enable audio. We're gonna do Windows Direct Sound. Audio controller is ICHAC97. We're gonna enable audio output, but also have audio input enabled. What this is gonna do is um, when we start this machine up, it's gonna boot up our Ubuntu, at which point we'll sign in and we should have the mic this time. So this involves turning off the virtual box. So you do have to actually power it off and then you'll go in your settings and you'll notice now that once it loads up here, if we start our TS3 and go into tools, options, capture. Hello. There we go. There we go. Okay, cool. okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. The audio works. Uh, you will want to adjust the mic. So probably turn it up like that. Uh, okay. Okay. There. There. Yeah, that's, yeah, perfect. that's perfect. You know what? You know what? I, 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 could I, I could use TeamSpeak speak like, like this. this. It, it sounds, sounds pretty, pretty damn good. Damn good. In, In fact, fact, you can, you can, uh, uh, you can even blow up the screen, screen there and make it all nice and large. large. And, and if you wanted, if you wanted to, to, you can open, you open Firefox, Firefox in here. In here. And, and depending on what your needs are, your wants and needs, you can go to the r4p3.net website. And I know, I know it's, it's probably, probably sounding it's silly because you're repeating and stuff, but uh, this this is really good. This is good news, guys. So thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoy, uh, and, and hopefully, I hope that you're able to to be safer and, of course, feel safer online using TeamSpeak three with this method.